हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर सौरभ पटवर्धन फ्रॉम नंदादीप आई हॉस्पिटल पीजी जी टीचिंग इंस्टीट्यूट एंड फेको एस आई सी एस ट्रेनिंग सेंटर सांगली महाराष्ट्र इंडिया इन अवर सेंटर वी हैव लॉट ऑफ टीचिंग एक्टिविटीज विच इंक्लूड्स हैंड्स ऑन ट्रेनिंग एज वेल In this video I'll be speaking about certain good habits which help you during phaco surgery to avoid some common complication. So always check the irrigation bottle first that it is full and proper height, check all parameters, check that sleeve and tips are properly configured and check that tubings of the phaco and eye probe are tightly attached before you start the surgery. Start with good size CCC. If CCC is too small, always make sure you enlarge it before doing hydro dissection, and plan the steps as per the grade of the cataract. Always keep the phaco probe in safe zone. Keep the dominant hand as steady as possible, and use non-dominant hand for maneuvers. Always enlarge the small CCC because it hampers good fluidics. The nuclear maneuvers are difficult and can put stress on zonules. How to enlarge the CCC? It's very simple. You can use either vanas or micro capsule scissors, and uh, you can make a tangential nick. Always try to make a tangential cut rather than radial, and then use visco to lift the tiny flap, and use micro capsule forceps now to hold this uh, tiny flap there, and then enlarge the capsule to desired size. This is a very important maneuver which everyone must learn. Once we have adequate size CCC, we notice that the number of complications significantly reduce. So it is always important to start with good size CCC. So always keep these micro scissors and micro capsulexis forceps in your instrument tray. Now always use the non-dominant hand which has, which is holding the Sinsky to maneuver the pieces around the phaco probe. It is very important not to move the phaco probe around. The non-dominant hand used for maneuvers reduces the instability of the anterior chamber and also you keep the phaco probe in the safe zone that reduces the chances of posterior capsular rupture. So for achieving good fluidics and stability of the anterior chamber, always train your non-dominant hand for these maneuvers. Keeping the phaco probe in the central 4mm safe zone is at most essential. And you can see your videos again and again to check whether you are following that rule because if in between you are going away from this safe zone while you are doing phaco emulsification, you will always find that your complication rates will increase. Though when you leave the safe zone, not necessarily that every time you will have a complication, but uh, we must understand the complication rates are high if you leave the safe zone. Use IA Pro for epinucleus or cortex if you feel that the anterior chamber is not stable. So avoid using phacophrobe for soft cortex or epinucleus if you feel it is risky. You can see here the surgeon tends to go away from the safe zone occasionally. Though the surgery might be uneventful in most cases, the, there will be high risk of posterior capsule rupture like in this case where the surgeon left the safe zone and cause punch in the posterior capsule. Now for achieving safe chop, what is important is that you bury only the exposed tip and after burying the tip, only keep the aspiration on and don't give phaco when the tip is buried. So phaco is on when you bury into the nucleus, but once you are buried, you have to keep only aspiration on and stop the phaco power. If you continue to do phaco, when the tip is buried, there is chance that you may punch through and cause a posterior capsular rupture. Always make sure that you complete all the chops before going to quadrant removal. Because the nucleus itself protects the posterior capsule in case of sudden surge or uncontrolled chopper movement when the nucleus is there when you are chopping. So never give phaco once tip is adequately buried as it may lead to punching a hole through the nucleus and to the posterior capsule like in this case you can see the tip is buried still the surgeon continues to give phaco and causes a punch and causes posterior capsule rupture as you can see with that uh, pupillary dilatation which happened. Now for the last piece 
we know that the commonest time when the surgeon gets posterior capsular rupture is while emulsifying the last piece because it's an unsupported piece. Now the preparation starts early where you watch for the surge when you are starting chopping or doing quadrant removal. Now just watch here as the surgeon tries to do the chop and then doing quadrant removal you find that there is surge. So it's important for the surgeon to notice this surge. You can see that pupillary constriction fluctuation in the anterior chamber after there was occlusion break which indicates that the inflow is not sufficient enough to cover the vacuum which is being generated there. So reduce the vacuum, increase the bottle height and once you do that you find that the surge is not there now as the surgeon continues to emulsify the other pieces as the parameters are now modified. As the chamber becomes more stable now you, it is safer to emulsify the last piece. So the preparation for the last piece begins quite early during phaco emulsification and you must keep watch on the anterior chamber fluctuation and the surge and reduce the vacuum and increase the bottle height as per the need. So watch the chamber fluctuation during chopping, reduce the vacuum, flow rate and raise IOP to reduce fluctuations and surge and thus we can avoid the posterior capsular rupture. When you are chopping the initial nuclear pieces, the posterior capsule is pushed back by other pieces. So rest of the nucleus works like a spacer and prevents posterior capsule from coming anterior and hitting the phaco probe. But when it comes to the last nuclear piece, there is no spacer between phaco probe and posterior capsule. Hence the fluidics should be stable and the, the position of the phaco probe should not be too posterior and it should be central. So these are very important things to understand to avoid last piece, right? So before the last piece, always try to emulsify one nuclear piece on the side of another piece. The other piece works as a spacer keeping the posterior capsule away. In other words, only last piece should behave like unsupported last piece. This is a very important statement to remember. So when you are emulsifying one piece, you drag the other piece on one side. So it keeps protecting the posterior capsule. As you keep watch on the fluidics, everything is under control. There is no anticipated surge and you can emulsify the last piece comfortably, keeping the phaco tip right at the center in the safe zone and making sure that there is no surge happening when you are emulsifying the previous pieces. So the strategy for the last piece is chop all the nucleus before starting emulsification of pieces anticipate the surge and reduce vacuum or raise IOP and prevent surge for the last piece. Emulsify one piece on the side of another apart from the last piece which needs to be protected by good phaco dynamics. Now once you implant the IOL make sure that the IOL optic case should be in the bag. So this is one more mistake we should avoid. Before you close the surgery make sure that the optic is completely in the bag and it's not coming out of the bag. This is good for the refractive stability later. Always make sure that the incisions are well hydrated and there is no AC collapse even after removal of the speculum else it may lead to post-operative hypotony and higher chance of infection later on. So make a habit of confirming that AC is well formed after removal of the speculum. In case of a posterior polar cataract, you can see after removal of the nucleus and cortex, you can find that there is a pre-existing PC tear. Now here we must do aqueous visco exchange in order to avoid further extension of this PC tear. So stop the irrigation as you start injecting the OVD and make sure you have practice of doing this even in routine cases because once PC rent happens and you don't inject OVD, you can see that the PC rent enlarges as you withdraw the phaco probe. It's always important to learn this trick while doing routine cases as well. So these are some of the good habits that uh, we must try to inculcate while doing phaco emulsification surgery. Thank you so much.